Hey, in this episode we are doing a to win a takedown. <laughs> We're doing emergency preparedness. Important information for everyone from beginner all the way up to preppers. preppers. And we're gonna do a home defense with some explosive demonstrations. Last, we're gonna cover new info on first aid, what you need to know and what they're starting to teach in first aid courses. So it's, it's awesome. It's really new and really important. So when was the last time you looked into your 72 hour kit? The bug out bag, get home bag, whatever you wanna call it, this emergency kit that's supposed to have everything you need in emergency. When was the last time you looked into it and do you know what's still in it? So let's take a look. <laughs> not tell you how many emergency preparedness videos I have seen of families showing their all family perfectly set up bags for all their kids and everybody and they're all red and they all say <laughs> emergency and first aid <laughs> and you would not believe how much how dangerous that would be in an actual emergency situation you do not want to stand out. You do not want to be the family or the person that looks like you've been anxiously awaiting the zombie apocalypse. Yes. It doesn't matter if you have <laughs> been or not. You need to make sure you don't look like it. Yeah, if, if everyone in your community is struggling and out of supplies, the last thing you want to look like is the person that has everything. If you have the professional, first aid kit like this, you might as well say morphine <laughs> and it, <laughs> you might as well say mug me. Yes. <laughs> first one to knock me out gets it all. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you want to blend in. Blend in. It is incredibly crucial. So the bags that we have here, this is for my family. I got them. I got these two backpacks from the DI. This one says Hannah, which my daughter loves, even though her name is not Hannah. <laughs> and, um, this bag, the big one, is for my husband, and it's, it was his back when he was in Boy Scouts. So we would be pretty well taken care of, and we're going to go over the stuff that's in it. But I want you to remember, do not, you do not want to stand out. You do yeah. not want to look like a prepper. If you are or not, don't look like it. You want to blend in. You want to look like you're having a bad day just like everybody else. <laughs> yes, that is what's called the gray man. So just blending into society, whether it's an emergency or not, you do not want to show everyone or tell everyone that you have amassed all of these preps for someone to eye because when going gets tough people will make back people will make decisions they wouldn't normally make even your best friend your buddy your brother anybody can their decision making is compromised when yes, in, in a bad situation so you really really want to keep your family yep. safe and who is the gray man the one nobody notices. Yep. Right? The one that blends in. The one that blends in. Yeah. These are some of the most important things you want to have in your go bag. Mm -hmm. So here is my go bag, and most of this is from my bag. You're going to want a map. And since you may not know where you're going to have to go, you always do want to plan. But this is a map of the whole United States so that we could have different contingency plans. Mm -hmm. I've got diapers and wipes for my little two-year-old. We've got toilet paper, duct tape. You really should take duct, duct tape because you can do anything with it. You can repair shoes. You can help with blisters. You can make uh, shelter. You can mm -hmm. do all kinds of stuff. <coughs> yes. You can even duct tape wounds together. Yes. You can duct tape wounds. <laughs> you can make slings. You can make yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. I've got a baggie just of Ziploc baggies. <laughs> and I've got uh, wind up solar powered flashlights, LED flashlights. I've got a wind up and solar powered radio. You definitely want means of communication. And believe me, the cell service is going to be the first thing to go. Even emergency, uh, the government even shuts down cell service so that emergency personnel can receive service. So mm -hmm. believe me, your cell service is going down. Yeah. 
And make sure you pack extra batteries, especially if you have anything that takes batteries and not is just solar power. Yep. And I've got a waterproof uh, little box here where I keep I laminated pictures of my family because if you lose one of you, then you're going to want pictures to show people to help find them. Um, I also have uh, just a picture of my kids and I've got, I made everyone a little ID card with their name, our, or at least I made our kids these, their name, their address, and our names and phone numbers with a picture of our family on the back. Mm -hmm. I got pens and paper in here. I've got um, hand sanitizer in here. Mm -hmm. So you want to have pictures of not only your family, but your pets and yeah. um, your home, whatever is most valuable to you. There were people in Katrina where the flooding destroyed all the homes and people evacuated and it also de destroyed banks and other government records of your, your home. And so people, a lot of people lost their homes because they had no way to prove they owned their house. So yeah. it's really important that you keep records with you and at least proof that this is your house, that is your dog, and and everything that, that you really care about. Yep. And as far as food, you want to go for high calorie and hopefully uh, lightweight. So even though peanut butter isn't super lightweight, it's a lot of calories for one jar. It's going to go a long, long ways, and it lasts a long time. So I always keep a bottle of peanut butter in our bags. Crunchy, that's my husband's uh, favorite. <laughs> and we've got some beef jerky. And so we got protein. We've also got some granola bars. And don't pack junk food. <laughs> a pack of donuts is not gonna get you very far. So <laughs> please pack things with nutrition in them. Yes. If you've got kids, it's great to have something that lifts their morale. Even candy can help lift their morale. Yeah, but fruit it's not leather, real. Uh, all that, yep. yep. Okay. But it's not real food. <laughs> don't pack candy as real food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and chocolate is gonna be a horrible mess. So try and avoid that. Yep. So as far as water goes, water is the most important thing to have. Yeah. and it is very heavy so if you can't if you're having to carry it you don't want um, too many water bottles but one of these is amazing the life straw and there are other alternatives and this is another water filtration but it is a personal water filter so you can go to any water source and stick this in and drink out of it because it will purify not only uh, chemical compounds but also organics and um, and viruses and things. This is an excellent source uh, for safe drinking water that's lightweight. So this will get you through through an hour or two. So keep some water that'll mm -hmm. get you through that. But believe me, an hour or two, emergencies last more than an hour or yeah. two. <laughs> so you're gonna want a more permanent source of clean water. So the Life Straw is awesome. And this one we have, this bigger, I think it filters about 500 gallons of water. So that's a better long-term mm -hmm. source. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind, no, even if you filter it, a standing pool of water is almost never safe, even if you boil it. So try to find running water is mm -hmm. always a safer bet. Yeah. <laughs> and as far as hygiene goes, make sure you pack a hygiene kit that includes soap, feminine products, anything mm -hmm. like that. Anything that's personal to you. Contact solution. If I can't take out my contacts, and if I can't wear my contacts, then it, it's over. Yeah. So, and a pair of glasses yeah. is even better as a longer term solution because contacts, they don't last forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, ideally you want to pack an extra set of clothes for each person um, and at socks. Least, at least two pairs of socks. Yes. Nobody, nobody should be walking or hiking in wet socks. That is a mm -hmm. recipe for disaster. And you don't want to be wet in any form. So you want to pack ponchos for everybody and mm -hmm. keep them at the top of your bag because if it stops raining, you're not going to have time to go digging deep in your backpack. Keep them at yeah. the top. And if your budget is limited, you can get these for a dollar a piece or less, even 50 cents, I think, at yeah. Walmart. You can get the cheap plastic, the clear ones, and they, they're fine. So, yep. Keep some rope and bug spray is really yes. helpful. And you want to have a couple different ways to light a fire. I've got some fire starter. You can buy some fire starter. This is a little heavier, but you can also make it. I've got these little, yeah. they're toilet paper rolls stuffed with lint from the dryer. And those will <laughs> light up for you. I've got a lighter. Mm -hmm. You've got a, um, another form of, it's like the flint. Yeah, the flint. And I've got a magnifying glass. 
Mm -hmm. So all great forms. Awesome. And as far as some self-defense or <laughs> keep some zip ties with you. They weigh almost <laughs> nothing. They can do almost anything. You can tie somebody up or you can build a <laughs> shelter or you can patch something up. They are amazing. Mm -hmm. Keep a knife with you. They will be so valuable. But you want to have a fixed knife. <laughs> if you have one that collapses, they're not as reliable. They have more moving parts. They break easy. You mm -hmm. want a fixed knife, if at all possible. And yes. a machete is also <laughs> Yes. So, And we've also got a bag of dog food in here for our dogs. Yes. If you have pets, plan to be prepared with your pets. The last thing you want to do in an emergency is lose your loved one. I mean, or not have what they yep. need. Or they're eating your food yeah. because you have nothing for And them. you feel guilty and they're eating Dog your food. Yep. Really important. And collapsible little water bottles. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Easy, easy to, to be prepared with your pet. All right, the next thing we're going to go over is probably the most, one of the most important things that's going in your bag, your first aid kit. The best thing to do is to get a tackle box and make your own, unless you want to spend a lot of money, mm -hmm. then make your own. Don't go to Walmart and buy a pre-made one because these look great. <laughs> they look like they would prepare you. They look like they would take care of anything, but they don't. They're usually full of band-aids and cold packs. And if your emergency can be solved with a band-aid and a cold pack, it was not an emergency. <laughs> so if you do yeah. buy something like this, then fill it up with then you fill it up on your own because <laughs> yeah. it's not going to have what you need. So here I've got a tackle box. <clears throat> These are quite inexpensive and they're awesome and they hold a ton of stuff. So we've got basic medications, all kinds of medications. We've got gauze, tape. I've even got an Israeli tourniquet bandage, which are amazing. And in the, in the description, I'll put a link on how to apply them. They are amazing. Um, of course, always have some hand sanitizer. I've got uh, latex gloves, non-latex gloves, more medication. I've got pads. I've even got real surgical staples and surgical <laughs> stable removal. Yeah. So it would not be pleasant to use it, but believe me, <laughs> it's better than taking a hot rod and cauterizing yourself like they do in the movies. <laughs> uh, I've also got a glow stick in here. So one of the things you want to have you want to have a good antibacterial. Do not get an antibacterial that comes in the pre-made cheap kits like at Walmart. Those ones, so our father has spent half of his career as a family doctor mm -hmm. and half of his career as a um, pediatric, uh, in pediatric neurosurgery. And he told me, he said, this, the cheap stuff that you get in those packets are so bad that it's actually food for bacteria <laughs> and it increases your infection and increases your chance of infection. So um, I happen to have this really nice uh, prescription antibacterial that I'm lucky to have. So my daughter got what was a staph infection and I gave it the cheap stuff and it grew and grew and got worse and it ended up being a MRSA infection. And if you don't know what a MRSA infection is, it's when you take a staph infection and you turn it into a super villain. And <laughs> yeah. that's what we got. So make, <laughs> make sure you have a good super uh, antibacterial, yeah. not a crap one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you want lots of dressings, uh, gauze, because first aid, if, if you want it to treat a headache, great, but really you want to be prepared for anything. This is for real emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, I took a stop the bleed um, um, first aid course. Yep. It's awesome. They just barely started implementing these. And it teaches you how to um, deal with a situation if there was a big cut um, or a bullet bullet hole or something yeah. like that, <clears throat> where if if you needed to call an ambulance for a cut artery, you are the life and death for mm -hmm. that person before that ambulance gets there. You are their first responder mm -hmm. because they're gonna die before an ambulance gets there. Yeah, yeah. So you, we, everyone is the actual first responders and what we do really does matter. Mm -hmm. So gloves are absolutely important. They absolutely <laughs> emphasize 
if there's something coming out of someone, <laughs> do not ever touch it. You have to have gloves on. They said you have no idea what type of diseases or infections they have. How much do you trust the person next to you or in the car or whatever? You we not everyone not everyone even knows what we have. So they did a study and it said six out of ten baby boomers have hepatitis because of previous um surgical instruments that weren't properly sanitized or disinfected yeah, so well. you really don't know so don't touch it if someone's bleeding put gloves on you want gloves all the time mm. we've got emergency blankets those are always good to have i've got lots of different kinds of medications so if you do have something more mild like a headache i do have baby aspirins in here so to help with a heart attack um, we got wraps i've got i've even got a, a surgical suture in here so another thing that i learned that if you have someone who has a bad cut on their arm and it is soaking through the dressing you put on it, do not remove the dressing. You just put more on top of it. So by the time they get to the emergency room, the doctors will know how much blood they lost. There was one guy who had a, a, not too much dressing over his head for a cut and they thought this isn't a big deal. But when they took the dressing off, his cut went from here all the way to the back because they kept removing the gauze as it soaked through. So the doctors had no idea what a serious is issue they had until they took it off. So whatever gauze is there, it is completely okay to leave it there as it soaks through and just add to it. Awesome. Yeah. I've also got a snake bite kit, which down here in the south, that's pretty important. <laughs> so pack whatever you can that's important in here. I like to pack some band-aids because we do want to avoid infection and there's nothing more comforting to my middle daughter than a band-aid that makes <laughs> all of her problems go away. Mm -hmm. But please, cold packs and band-aids, those are not emergency materials. Please pack real emergency kits. If you want to try to find an emergency kit, don't look for emergency kit, look for trauma kit. Yeah. That is where the real emergency products are. And then you always want to add medicines that are unique to you. Mm -hmm. Whether it's allergy medications, it's prescriptions, um, sleeping pills, anything that's specific to you, make sure you keep it in your bag. When I make mine at home, I make mine small enough to fit in all of my bags. And so what I do is I get a gallon size Ziploc bag and I have all of my medications already in there. And they all look like this. So you write down on here acetaminophen, so for Tylenol. How many milligrams, expiration date, what it is shaped like and the color of the pill. And, and then you can easily store lots of different kinds of meds in a very, very small amount of space with everything you have. So that is an easy way to pack that into any kind of emergency bag. Yeah, that is awesome. And if you are worried about maybe Maybe you want to keep medication as a trade or because it's very valuable or to help people. You want to keep, if you can keep it in the original bottle, this will help with that because especially if it's a brand name, keep it in a brand name bottle and that way they know and they can trust that what is in here is what it says and they yep. recognize it. That way you can help someone else or trade or sell if that's if that's the case because it's people aren't going to value a white pill in a little baggie. So yes. this, this, this is, is great. for you and your family. Your don't own. trust that everyone else is gonna trust <laughs> what you wrote for these little pills. And don't buy medication that looks like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so I wanna show you another thing I learned in this awesome Stop the Bleed course, which I I highly recommend you take for yourself. It is so cool. It's not a long course, but it really teaches you yeah. how to deal with um, serious injuries like cuts, lacerations. Mm -hmm. So let's simulate one right now. Okay. This <laughs> happened while Shelly was outside today. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do, say it's bleeding a lot. Profusely. What do you do to help? relieve the bleeding. Raise it above her head 
and if that's still not working you can put pressure on her brachial artery I'm not really doing it <laughs> but you squeeze really tight right here and that will significantly stop the bleeding up here so, I should probably be sitting down so I don't pass out yeah. while she's trying to yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now to put um, a proper dressing on it we want pressure dressing so we do the 4x4 four four gauze on top and then you take this isn't gauze but simulate this as being gauze so you want to wrap it around once around above it and then once below and then what you want to do is twist it as you come over the wound twist and twist I'm not putting extra pr tightness right here or pressure, but the twisting itself is all it needs to put the proper amount of pressure over the wound. And then you go around and finish it off. So this will really, really help that wound. And like I said before, if it soaks through, just put more on top of it. Don't remove it all and put more on, just leave it so that if you get to a doctor, they will know exactly how much blood she's lost, <laughs> which is important. <laughs> okay, now to simulate a bullet hole, the new uh, techniques that they are teaching first responders now, it started eight months ago, is instead of putting pressure, say you, she has a bullet wound right here, instead of just putting pressure on it, you actually want to fill the hole so if you put pressure on the hole will fill with blood we're trying to avoid that so they are teaching now to stuff it with gauze which <laughs> sounds so painful but they said that is what you need to do so imagine this is a bullet hole you want to stuff the gauze in as much as you possibly can until you can't fit any more gauze and if they pass out, keep going, because they'd rather yeah. you do it while you're unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> don't wait for them to wake up. No, Just don't. Keep going. Just do it. <laughs> so, yeah, that is really important. They want to emphasize now. Don't just put pressure on it. Fill it with gauze. Okay. Otherwise, you'll just be giving them internal bleeding instead of external <laughs> yeah. bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so say Shelly is off to the ER to get this taken care of. If, if she was severely wounded or, oh no, okay, so if she has a tourniquet on, say right here, which you always put the tourniquet on at least four to six inches away from the wound because the veins or arteries will retract when they're cut. So if you put a tourniquet on right here, uh, it's probably not going to stop the bleeding. It'll be bleeding inside over here because that's where the vein ended up. So you always want to put the tourniquet on four to six inches above the wound and if they have a tourniquet on do not put it take it off and it's gonna hurt a lot so mm -hmm. if they are really giving you a big problem about it it means you're doing it right and it means they're <laughs> healthy and they're okay and they're gonna be okay but before they go to the hospital you write the time of when you put the tourniquet on. You can write it on the tourniquet. A lot of new ones, they have a spot where you can write the time. If not, feel free to write on the forehead because no one's gonna miss that. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing we didn't mention earlier, money is really important to keep yep. in your bag. Small bills. Small bills. Yes. If Nobody's gonna break 100. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So if you desperately need to fit, to fill your tank of gas and your debit card's not working, your credit card's not working, and all you have is a $100 bill, well, there goes your $100 bill. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so be sure to have lots of cash. And my awesome sister made me this cool binder. It says, our guide when it all hits the fan. It's really helpful because it's information on how to prepare for and how to uh, get through everything from hurricanes to earthquakes to everything and it also has important contact information that I customize um, I don't want to show the whole planet on this video <laughs> But I've got copies of our birth certificates copies of our car titles anything like that 
anything where we're going to need to prove who we are or what we own, anything like that is in here. I've also got my pictures of my pets in here, um, or at least the ones that are more likely to get lost or something. So I've got my family, my kids, my dog, my lovable pooch, my other dog, and our beloved Gwendolyn Felicia. So keep pictures of them. Yes. Too. And another thing that I forget is very important. Make sure everyone in your family knows where everything is. Yes. Make sure everyone knows where the emergency bags are, where the first aid kit is, where the important documents are. That's critical. If you're out of town and it's your spouse at home and they're not the ones that do all this stuff and they can't contact you, well, all of that prepping was for nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> so if they can't find it. Also keep in mind, don't envision yourself as a lone man in the wilderness surviving. <laughs> the chances are you're going to have other people with you, whether it's your family or friends or neighborhood, there's going to be other people with you. And if it is just you wandering alone, surviving in the wilderness, that's a really sad, depressing thought. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure that they are prepared too. If you live with extended family, make sure they're prepared because you cannot compensate for their lack of preparation. They will be with you. You need to, ha need to prepare for them or make sure that they're prepared. So, yeah, yeah. All right, we want to talk about water one more time. So this is really helpful when you're just at home, but you're preparing for like a big storm. This does not help in an earthquake because earthquakes are not predictable. <laughs> but this will help with a hurricane or other things like that. It's called a water bob. And they're great. You just put them in your tub and you fill them up with water. That way, if your power goes out, you lose water or whatnot, you've got a whole tub full of water that's clean and contained in a tub. Now, the downside to these is it's a one-time go. Uh, you can't wash them out, dry them out, and reuse them because there's no way to fully dry them out. And you also have to prepare. You actually have to know, well, the storm is going to be really bad. I better fill up my tub. You can't wait till the last second. And um, so, yeah. but this is really handy. And if it is some emergencies, though, you know that the water, maybe say the reservoir broke, dam yeah. broke or something, and you only have a limited supply of water. Say you're in city water, city limits, you got city water. There's only so much water in the pipes that's left mm -hmm. and that's this, clean. Yeah, that's clean. So if your water's going to run out, you might as well fill it with this before the pipes run dry. Yeah. It's a really great thing. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, and also before an emergency happens, if you can predict it like a storm, turn off your utilities or after the emergency happens, know how to turn off your utilities. I've been yes. in situations where I'm like, I have no idea how to shut off the water and I busted a, a pipe. Please turn off your yes, utilities. Especially the gas. Oh. Earthquakes, any kind of natural disaster, you you want to know how to turn off your gas immediately. <laughs> yeah. they, the officials really emphasize that. And also I wanted to say I went to a, uh, a talk by a lady who was stuck in Katrina. She was there. Um, she was in New Orleans for a couple of days for a wedding and it was in the worst time possible. She ended up in the Superdome and she had to deal with being in an emergency situation in a shelter and she told us all about what you need to prepare if you were stuck in a shelter and it's not what you think so the officials they plan on bringing the temperature way down to keep germs at bay so it's going to be cold so have a coat ready no matter what time of year <clears throat> they leave the lights on all day all night so wear eye covers keep those in your hygiene kit or something <laughs> yeah for sleeping and earplugs. It's going to be loud. Kids are crying. You get a tiny amount of space. Card games for kids. Something to do. They said it's really paramount along with the pictures to prove that you're with family. If there's school buses evacuating people, they will require proof that you are related to someone. And in some instances, she said that if there's one spot left on the bus, they will take your child and they will separate you. They do not care. So make sure that you have a way to communicate with them and proof of your family and your pets and everything because they said it's it's not a good situation to be in. Oh, that sounds miserable if you ask me. Yeah. All right. 
So we want to talk about home defense. We're going to do some fun explosive things outside. <laughs> but first off, so we took a firearms training course from a police officer and he said the most important and most effective home defense tool is a shotgun. He said any other firearms in your home are only tools to get you to your shotgun. <laughs> so have one of these. Um, this, this one um, has the shortest barrel that is legal in Georgia because it is only for home defense. This is not for skeet shooting. This is not for sport. This is for close contact indoor quarters. Mm -hmm. And this is a 12 gauge shotgun. So this is very helpful for us, but home defense, please have a shotgun in your home. Please keep it safe away from the kids. You can get a good home defense shotgun for $200. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we have, um, among other things, we have uh, two revolvers. This is my favorite. Revolvers are amazing because they're so simple. There's nothing to really to know because there's so few moving parts. Um, this one is our judge. This one helps around the house when we're nervous about snakes or other various uh, things around. <laughs> it holds a 45 caliber bullet and it also holds shotgun shells. So, and we usually keep chambered uh, both. So anyway, very, very very helpful but number one home defense according to a police officer professional uh, defense training instructor is your shotgun yep. so and we're gonna play with that outside and show you the importance of safety in your home one of the things we're going over and we're going to show you <laughs> doors do not stop bullets you need to remember that whenever you fire a firearm in a home at an intruder that you know what is on the other side because nothing in your home is going to stop that bullet. It is going to go through walls. It is going to go through doors. So know what's on the other side. Never ever. It doesn't matter if he's standing right there. Don't shoot your firearm. If you have something like a child in a room behind him, mm -hmm. know what is behind him. So we're going to show you what firearms do to interior doors. I don't have any exterior doors to show this on, but the interior doors. Yes. Oh, yeah, so. And one last thought before we get to that is make sure it's available. Yeah. If you're in the middle of the night and it's dark, have a system so that you can reach your firearm and get safe, you know, yeah. be, protect yourself, mm -hmm. but also keep it protected from kids and friends who come over. So yeah. you want to be able to have a safe that is near your bed or something that's easily accessible. Yeah. If you're keep them, uh, like from in the gun shows where they zip tie the trigger and the magazine and they keep the ammo on the other side of the house. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to do you absolutely no, no good. good unless it's a literal zombie <laughs> apocalypse <laughs> and then you still have to get it out before it's good <laughs> at all. So <laughs> make yep. sure it's accessible, but safe. Yep. So let's go have some fun. All right. We are out to do some damage. We're going to do some fun. We're going to show you how to, uh, we're going to show you the damage that a 12 gauge shotgun will do to your interior door to remind you to know what's behind your intruder. Yeah. So we want to demonstrate what it would be like the comparable distance inside a home firing a common firearm that people would use for defense so you can see what it would do to your door so you can understand what it might do to a person on this side or on the other side that you did not plan on so let's see some damage yep and then we're gonna blow up blow up some tannerite and we might throw in a little gasoline on top of that so. yes please <laughs> <laughs> all right here's our common 45 caliber pistol this is what it's going to do to your door. Nice. Here we go. Nice solid bullet hole. That door probably didn't even slow it down. Here's the exit wound to our door. It's about the same size, maybe a tiny bit bigger. Okay, here we have a 12 gauge shotgun for a home defense. It has the shortest barrel legally allowed by the state of Georgia, so it's an excellent home defense weapon. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Here we have nice that beer. and this. So that has way more stopping power, clearly, than 
the 45, which is still a very nice high caliber for a home defense pistol. So, so Judge, this is one of my favorite uh, guns we got on property because it's great for both uh, threat in the home, but also on property of maybe animals. Anyway, it, it uh, fires both a 45 caliber caliber bullet and a shotgun shell. It's pretty fantastic. And right now I've got chambered both. Yeah. So let's see what it does to this door. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is very different. Look at the spread on this one. Yeah, that's what a shorter barrel does for you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, that got Billy Bob and his friend Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's what uh, these beautiful babies are going to do your, to your door. So please be aware of safety and remember the number one firearm safety rule. Don't ever point a loaded or unloaded firearm at anything that you're not willing to destroy. <laughs> and uh, make sure that it's nice and tight to your shoulder. And don't stick your eye up to the scope. Yeah. No no playing up here. You'll get <laughs> sniper's eye. And look like a <laughs> raccoon for yeah. a couple of weeks. <laughs> and an idiot. <laughs> so I tried to find a practical reason to include Tannerite explosives in this video. And I just couldn't find a real practical reason <laughs> other than Home Alone style booby traps that could do some real damage. And of course, they'll take out a beaver dam or a tree. <laughs> but uh, we're going to blow some up anyway, and we're going to throw in a little gasoline for some extra flair. So <laughs> here we <Yes>. go. <laughs> <laughs> joining us we had a really fun time making this video I hope you learned something and if you have anything to offer we would love to hear about it please put it in the comment mm -hmm. section what advice do you have anything from first aid bug out bags home defense anything we would love to hear it yeah if you, if you like the video hit the like button and please subscribe yes we would love to share more videos with you I promised you my sister would be in some of our videos and here <laughs> she is yeah. promise fulfilled <laughs> <laughs> but this won't be the only one. So we can't wait to see you in more videos and we'll see you then.